Hi guys, in this lecture, we are going to establish our model's plant dynamics from the mathematics and equations we derived in the previous lectures. Just to make it clear, a plant is a subsystem with inputs and outputs. Here, the plant is actually our car, and we'll establish the equations that govern it. Let's recap what we saw in the previous lecture. First of all, we have the motor traction, which is the only force making the car move forward. We also have rolling resistance and aerodynamic drag, which both act to break the car's motion. So the motor traction can be expressed as FF equals 40.5 T multiplied by 0.7. As most of you will notice, I just added the multiplication by 0.7, and this is to take into account all the mechanical inefficiencies such as the friction between parts, the heating of some electric components inside the motor, the slip that we couldn't exactly take into account, and all these little losses that occur here and there that need to be taken into account in some way to make our model as accurate as possible. So I didn't just invent this value, I actually first built the model, tested our model, and changed this mechanical inefficiency in a way that eventually gave the most realistic results. So this mechanical efficiency got our model a lot closer to reality than if it wasn't there. We also have the rolling resistance, which is FR equals 413 newtons, as we saw in the previous lecture, because the weight of the car is constant and the rolling, the rolling resistance coefficient is constant as well. This rolling resistance force remains the same throughout. Finally, we have the aerodynamic drag, which is expressed D equals 0 0.3381 multiplied by the velocity squared of the car. Most of you will have heard about Isaac Newton and his laws of motion. If you had a look at my other courses, you will also know that these laws are extremely important even if in today's physics. So according to the second law of Newton, the sum of all external forces acting on an object is equal to its mass multiplied by its acceleration. So we can write this as the sum of external forces, which are here I called F, is equal to the mass of the car M multiplied by its acceleration. So here we can rewrite this by summing the forces we just described in the previous slide. So 0 0.7 times 4.5 T, which is the motor traction taking into account the mechanical and electrical inefficiencies, minus 413 minus 0 0.3381 v squared which we will recognize as the drag you can see that we subtract the drag and the rolling resistance from the motor traction because they act in the opposite direction and this is equal to the mass times the acceleration we also know that the mass of the car is 2108 kilograms so we can just directly fill in this value Eventually, this is equivalent to 0 0.7 times 40.5 t minus 413 minus 0 0.3381 v squared divided by 2108, which is equal to the acceleration, the acceleration also being the derivative with respect to time of velocity. Just a little note before we move forward, we could actually transform this equation to the Laplace domain exactly like we did for our brushed DC motor and transformed its torque equation to the Laplace domain, it would make it quite easy to solve for the velocity V, but just to show you other methods of solving equations, we're going to keep it this way and solve it using MATLAB functions in the Simulink model. So obviously, I would always recommend to transform linear equa uh, differential equations like this that described engineering systems to the Laplace domain simply because it makes everything a lot smoother, a lot easier, and gives really reliable results. 
However, for the sake of demonstration and to give you an example of an other method, we'll use a MATLAB function to solve it and stay in the time domain. So we now have an equation that describes the dynamics of our plant, the car. And this equation is 0 0.7 times 40.5 times the torque produced by the motor minus 413 minus 0 0.3381, the velocity of the car squared divided by 2108 equals the time derivative of the velocity of the car. So this equation relates torque and velocity and can be solved numerically in MATLAB and Simulink quite easily once inputted in our system. You will notice that we have the derivative of V and the value of V squared. So if you were to solve this analytically, not using the Laplace transforms or using MATLAB, it would actually be quite challenging. Doable, but quite challenging. So we also have our equation for the torque produced by the motor, which is 0 0.25 multiplied by the voltage input in the motor in the Laplace domain, minus 0 0.25 times omega s, the rotational velocity of the motor, divided by 493 times 10 power minus 9 s, plus 5.3 times 10 power minus 3. So, this equation, which is in the Laplace domain, relates the torque produced by our motor with the input voltage and its rotational speed. It can also be easily solved in MATLAB and Simulink once inputted in our model. I quite like the fact that we have one equation in the time domain and one equation in the Laplace domain. As I said before, it's always better in control engineering to work in the Laplace domain. It's easier, faster, and smoother, but for the sake of example, I will keep the plant dynamics in the time domain. Finally, a note about the controller we're going to use. So we're going to use the PID block provided by Simulink. It makes creating control systems extremely easy because everything is done for you. You just put in the block in Simulink, connect everything and start tuning the gains of each part of the PID block, so the proportional, integral and derivative gains, to get the response you want. You even have an auto-tuner that tunes the gain for you according to what performance you want. But if you eventually want to integrate that in real-world systems, so for example microcontrollers or embed that in C, you might want to learn a bit more about PID and how they work. However, in this course only, you can definitely make it without you know, knowing them exactly how they work. I would really advise to know a bit how they work, the, the fundamentals of their functioning, but you don't, know, you don't need to know the diagrams and the equations by heart. So we will tune the gains and configuration of our controller until we are satisfied with the performance of our Model S. So obviously this is super subjective guys, like I'll do something but you can, I'll show you how to do it a different way and you can try many different gains to, you know, have the performance that you want and that you want to compare with if you find magazines or, or real life example of performance of the Model S. You can use uh, this uh, PID tuning to make the model exactly the way you want. Also, in the end, you can change all the variables to fit the model to another car. And, you know, with what you know now, you could definitely fit a plane or even be more ambitious with rockets and stuff like this. So, in order to learn more about controllers and control theory, if you're interested about that and want to really understand deeply what it's all about, I recommend to have a look at my course Control Systems from Mathematical Modeling to PID Control. The coupon code MATSIM9 will give you a 66% discount on the course. I will always make sure it's available for you guys. It will never run out. So if you're ever interested um, in learning more about this, it will also really make you understand this course a lot better, uh, particularly when we jump to the MATLAB and Simulink section. 
This is now the end of the model building part of the course. We will now jump to MATLAB and Simulink in order to actually build our model. So if you have any questions about everything we saw up till now, please ask me. I'll be very happy to help you. I know some of this can be quite challenging, but in the end, it's always possible to understand it with a bit of uh, explanations and maybe I didn't explain it well enough in the course so I'm always super happy to develop stuff and give you more information if you want to. Thank you very much guys.